नमस्कार ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दिस सेशन वी आर कंसिडरिंग वॉट योग कॉल्स एज क्लेशियाज क्लेशाज आर रेंडर्ड एज एफ्लिक्शंस एंड आई हैव बीन टेलिंग यू दैट इट्स अ वेरी टेक्निकल टर्म एंड it doesn't have just a literal meaning klesha is klesha only to madhyam adhikari yogi spiritually evolved person they are afflictions to them and they are not afflictions to us they are enjoyments to us that is they are life to us actually the material of our existence as mortals with which we are transmigrating life after life after life after life the material of it is what is called as klesha our existence in various incarnations in various forms in various planes of creation which has been there from time without beginning the material of that is what is called as klesha we mortals who are seeking our hap- uh, seeking after happiness delight pleasure joy success that's what is be all and end all in life for we mortals be that human beings or tiniest creature every creature every life is looking for happiness delight pleasure joy success but the ones who are in paramartha they are not at all looking for that which we mortals look for and cherish to have it and relish when we have it those are the seven sages who are looking for human spiritual samam bonam which is freedom from existence with an embodiment life after life after life after life in some form or the other that's called freedom that's called bandhana mukti and that's called liberation that they want this liberation manifesting in some form or the other and um uh, going after and getting bhogas experiences in life of various kinds so for spiritually evolved merely having a physical existence itself is an affliction and for us physical existence is locus of all our uh, delights that we want throughout our existence so the klesha is that which is keeping us in bondage so that we appear and disappear in eternal belt of time endless belt of time and those are spiritually world they want a place from where they won't return yad gatva nivartante tad dhama yad gatva na nivartante tad dhama paramam mama as bhagavad gita puts it dacha punaravartate nacha punaravartate as the brahma sutra end in the text and upanishads which speak about मोक्षम निर्वाण 
so that this bubble of life in various forms won't appear and then disappear. Our every, every existence in every form is just a bubble in the eternal time. And the, these spiritually evolved people want this to end. They want, don't want this constant appearance and disappearance coming in the form of embodiment while the self is eternal. The self doesn't have movements. The self, Atma, doesn't have appearance and disappearance. So the metaphysical status of all of us is something which is explained in Jnana Yoga. Aksharam, Avyayam, Avikari, Ajanma. So that is the that is the essential status of oneself. And it doesn't have these appearance, disappearance, coming and going and birth and uh, growth and disease and decay and death, etc. And that is agony for them. That is agonizing for them. To take up any embodiment and suffer. The inevitable. Any embodiment, any body is going to face the death. And then through the course of disease and decay and old age, etc., that uh, is what is painful for them and not for us. We know that it, it is eternal reality. They having come to birth, we are going to die. But for these spiritually evolved people, it's totally a, a different uh, condition that they are seeking after, whereby they do paramartha sadhana, moksha sadhana. So therefore, with their reference, and their, since it is essentially an affliction, essentially a klesha, it has been rightly designated as klesha. Although for us, as I have been telling you, that it is not klesha, it is our joy, it is our delight, it is our pleasure. So, that's how we are commencing to understand Klesha and Klesha Parva. There is something called as Klesha Parva. Uh, with little familiarity with Patanjali Yoga Sutra, one uh, easily ends up saying that there are five Kleshas. There are not five Kleshas, there are Klesha Parva. One Klesha manifesting in five forms. One Klesha having five aspects and facets. So therefore, Patanjali actually calls them Klesha Parva. Pancha Parva Klesha. Not Panchaha Klesha. Not five Kleshas, but five phases of Klesha. And all these Pajaparva Klesha, they are kind of Viparyaya, kind of delusions, illusions, perversions. This is to be understood that these Kleshas are uh, something which can be called as perverse science. It is not nay science. Nay science is uh, absence of knowledge. It is not just agnanam, but viparita gnanam. We have viparita gnanam about ourselves. In the sense when we are essentially, quintessentially eternal, we think we are ephemeral. When we are essentially 
permanent. We think we are impermanent. When we are really self, we think we are non-self. We identify ourselves in our body and in our mind and we say, this is myself. So we identify that we are selves, but we identify ourselves in bang opposite way than we actually are. So there is that perver science, perversion. We have pervert idea, notion, concept of ourselves. And not only about ourselves, we have that getting extended. And therefore, the avidya is called taking nitya as anitya. Taking sat as a sat. Taking uh, ashuchi as shuchi. Impurity as purity. Taking the non-self as self. And taking the uh, Pleasure as sorrow and sorrow as pleasure. So you see, this is perverse science, taking bang opposite. So that is one thing. It's not just idea of uh, something opposite to realities, but the kleshas have much more functions as portrayed in Vyasabhasya quite explicitly and implied in Yoga Sutras. Guna Adhikara are uh, reinforced. The power of Gunas to work within themselves, Sattva Rajatama Gunas to interact, that is encouraged. The field is opened out for Gunas to play a walk. And the one resigns to gunas. One accepts the power of gunas, sattva rajatama gunas. So the gunadhikara, the power of gunas over the transcendent is what the kleshas do. And the guna, guna parinama, the cause and effect chain, remains unobstructed. And then it also encourages. So the cause and effect relationship, or the chain of cause and relationship is encouraged. The field is encouraging. Our life, which is the field for karya, karana, bhava, is encouraging to cause and effect phenomenon. The gunas start nurturing and nourishing each other. And therefore, we have this mortal life of the nature of pain, pleasure, delusion, happiness, delight, sorrows and delusion, infatuations. This is what the kleshas do. The kleshas don't just give us an embodiment, but kleshas also trigger the gunas to rule over the gunatita, the transcendent one, the self, and totally enmesh the self in the phenomenalism of gunas, of the nature of their interactions, the interplays and interface. And keep us mounted on the wheel of karma. Although the self is akarta, essentially, yet 
it is without respite, without relent, put on the wheel of karma, karma phala, karma ichcha, karma phala, karma ichcha, karma pravartana, karma phala. And then this is really relentlessly going on. So, this is what the kleshas do. The, as I said in the previous session, it is a Adi Maya which casts a spell on us and gives us this existence in the form that we have today going from one yoni to another yoni, one life species to another life species. We have endless journey going on because of this Prakriti Maya, Adi Maya. So, this is what the Kleshas are. In brief, Vyasa mentions, Gunadikaram Dhrudayanti Paranama avasthapayanti. So, gunadhikaram drudayanti. The gunas dictate over our self. And then paranamas are commenced. So, that is what the Kleshas are. In Lakshmi Tantram of Pancharatram, there is a very interesting definition. Klishyante yena rupena chishakti bhoktrutam gata sa klesha panchadhagneya naman vasya meshrunu tame moho maha moho tamistrohi andatam sagnitaha Avidya Pancha Parvesham Tamaso Gati Ruttama is what Lakshmi Tantram of Pancharatra Agama says in 12.8 and 9 verses. So in Sankhya, they are, Kleshas are referred to uh, in the terms Tama, Moha, Mahamoha, Tamistra, and Namistra. Tama means darkness. Moha means greater darkness. Mahamoha means further, greater, and greater darkness. And then Tamistra means further and further and further darkness. And Andata Tamistra means absolute, complete darkness. So this is the darkness within us. And tab- therefore, the Upanishads have the prayers. Tamasoma Jyotir Gamayam. Tamasoma. I am engulfed by Tamas, which is darkness. And that's why the spiritual process is called wisdom process. Spiritual wisdom. Spiritual light. It is light form. Spiritual, spiritual process is illumination. In the dark zone, in the deep psyche, which which there is a blackout, complete blackout. And that's why those terms are found in Lakshmi Tantram and even in the Sankhya philosophy, which I mentioned, Tama, Moha, Mahamoha, Tamisra, Andha Tamisra. Now, Patanjali has corresponding uh, descriptions to this. The avidya that Patanjali mentions is tama. Asmita that Patanjali mentions is moha. Raga is maha moha. Dvesha is tamistra. Abhinivesh is andha tamistra. So Patanjali has these five nomenclatures because Patanjali is dealing with the Chitta, Chitta Vijnanam. And with reference to Chitta, these are the nomenclatures 
given by Patanjali, which are very, very, very apt. So, as I said just now, the, these are not five kleshas, but five phases of kleshas. Therefore, in other words, it can be said that avidya, greater avidya, greater and greater avidya, greater and greater and greater avidya, and greater and greater and greater and greater and greater avidya. So it is avidya which expands. And then it has expanded radius which is engulfing our chitta progressively. So, we are familiar with the terms avidya, aspita, raga, dvesha, abhinivesha as pancha parva kleshas. Avidya is avidya, aspita is avidya into avidya. Raga is avidya into avidya into avidya. And then dvesha is avidya into avidya into avidya into avidya. And abhinivesha is avidya into avidya into avidya into avidya into avidya. So if you have to depict in uh, for a, a figure with some configurations, so the avidya is like a bubble. And as we see that the bubble in water goes on becoming larger and larger and larger before it breaks and ceases to be a bubble. bubble. So these kleshas are like those bubbles, smaller bubble. A small bubble is avidya, then little larger is asmita, further larger is raga, further larger is dvesha and further and further larger which is about to break. It doesn't become further larger, it breaks. The bubble goes on expanding, finally to break. So its last phase of being a bubble is something called Abhinivesha. So mathematically it should be understood that Avidya square is Asmita. Avidya raised to 3 is Raga, Avidya raised to 4 is Dvesha, Avidya raised to 5 is Abhinivesha. Um, so, this is how it can be put in a mathematical formula. Basically, we have to understand that it is only Avidya. All the kleshas in their five stages, they are all avidya only. And they are escalation of avidya, expanse of avidya. So we will have to understand what is avidya. Then if we understand the characteristics of avidya, then we will know that more escalation of it gets the different nomenclatures. So just now as we saw that the kleshas are something that put us on the wheel of karma and then relentlessly we are um, tormented or we are rotated on the wheel of karma and we can't escape, we cannot dismount ourselves from the wheel. Patanjali in his words tell, tells us, Klesha mulak karma shayaha. So, Klesha are giving us karma shaya. Karma shaya means karma vasana. Karma vasana they comes in the form of jati ayur bhoga. This karma vasana is either drushta janma vedaniya or adrushta janma vedaniya. That means there is eternity in klesha vasana. 
it is not just for uh, a time frame so our seen life that is present and current life and all the unseen lives retrospectively uh backwards and prospectively forwards all that is because of kleshas that is the karma ashaya karma vasana is of two kinds in one basic classification that is drushta janma vedaniya adrushta janma vedaniya of our present life the seen life experienced life and the others which are unseen lives which might which are the lives of our past of which we have no sight and no vision and no memory and also the forthcoming lives of which we have no idea so patanjali also endorses with the concept that the kleshas are not just kleshas but the kleshas give us karma ashaya and if there is a karma ashaya then we have the endless chain continued and this happens because of guna adhikaram the guna start t- taking over and then they start dictating they start working interacting with each other the, within themselves so sometimes sattva guna is encouraged sometimes raja guna is encouraged sometimes tamo guna is encouraged sometimes sattva guna has preponderance sometimes tamo guna has preponderance mandai sometimes raja guna has preponderance sometimes sattva guna has cover governance sometimes raja guna has governance sometimes tamo guna has governance sometimes sattva guna is governed some uh, sometimes rajo guna is governed sometimes tamo guna is governed so this goes on happening this give and take in guna as is going on eternally because prakriti is also anadi prakriti is birthless and deathless so this on goes on continuing and then that's why we get the enactments in the life in the form of form of lives life after life after life and goes endlessly until the spiritual samambhonam is struck what is called as moksha or nirvana or kaivalya anyway the point is these kleshas are staging the whole drama of the living creation on the planet and in the universe not only in the planet but in entire universe the living creation is enacting different kinds of roles so that uh, that is called avidya basically the klesha is avidya and now let us try to understand this avidya the avidya is grossly rendered as avidya a is a negative prefix prefix and then this negative prefix to vidya or ne- negative prefix to gnana so it is avidya or agnana or gnana bhava and vidya bhava but this is the meaning on psychological plane but as i have been telling you that we are now entering the realm of meta psychology so this is not a psychological topic that we are dealing with the kleshas are meta psychological the gnana agnana is in our is our brain it is brain which is knowing or not knowing or knowledgeable or ignorant so we refer to that uh, aspects to the brain 
सो ज्ञानम अज्ञानम विद्या अविद्या इन साइकोलॉजिकल प्लेन वी अंडरस्टैंड एंड दैट्स वाई वी से somebody is very intelligent and somebody is not so intelligent or perhaps somebody is very stupid. So this avidya is something that should be understood at the outset that this is a metapsychological concept, metapsychical concept. It doesn't need a brain for avidya to function. Because the brain will come with the birth and will go with the death. But these kleshas are eternally there. This avidya is eternally there. Even if you smash the brain and you kill a person, yet the kleshas are going to work. His tendencies are going to work and the, the, that is going to take re-in- reincarnation. The dead ones are going to born again. Having born, everybody is going to die and having died, everybody is going to take birth again. So, this should not be equated with uh, psychical aspect of knowledge, ability or igno- ignorance. But this is meta-psychological. Um, So this is also referred to, avidya is referred to as viparita jnanam. It is not absence of jnanam. It is viparita jnanam. We all have not a jnana, but we have viparita jnanam. A jnanam with respect to something, that is, we do not know something, something is unknown to us. So that is a jnanam. If you do not know, it is Agnyanam. But here the case is not that you do not know, you know perversely. And that is why this is Viparita Gnyanam. Avidya is a Viparita Gnyanam and not absence of Gnyanam. Uh, so that's how it has to be understood. Avidya also has another meaning in uh, Sanskrit like the prefix a uh, in English also comes in two ways a uh, prefix to logic makes it a logic a uh, logical a uh, logical means be, uh, beyond logic transcendence it has a transcendence so the a prefix even in English comes for a transcendence, not necessarily negation. So opposite of logical becomes illogical, but transcendence to logical becomes illogical. So similarly, the a prefix comes in both ways. So, avidya also means exalted knowledge and avidya also means absence of knowledge and perverse knowledge. In Ishavasya Upanishad you get wonderful haim, avidyaya amrityum tirtva vidyaya amrutam mashnute by avidya you will cross the mortality and by vidya you will get uh, immortality so crossing mortality and getting immortality so vidya gives the former aspect mrutyum tirtva the mrutyu is crossed over Mortality is crossed over and Vidya, Vidya gives you Amrutatvam. So, Avidyaya Amrutyum Tirtva, Vidyaya Amrutam Ashnute is what Ishavasya Upanishad says. So, uh, 
in one sense vidya is greater than avidya because vidya gives you immortality and avidya only helps you cross mortality mortality so avidya means all that knowledge and wisdom which comes in the earlier phase of knowledge pursuit and when a final knowledge comes that becomes vidya so um in adhyatma vidya is considered to be greater than avidya and therefore not vidya as opposed to avidya or avidya as opposed to vidya but vidya as greater than avidya this is clear in that haim of ishavasya upanishad um but there is avidya in the sense patanjali mentions which is prior to vidya or prior to that avidya even so therefore avidya here is something which is called can be called as inverted knowledge inverse knowledge inversely knowing oppositely knowing so that is what is avidya in the sutra so what is this perver science or knowing something pervertly or knowing something inversely anitya shuchi dukh anatma su nitya shuchi sukh atma khyatir avidya is what patanjali defines in the second um uh, the fifth sutra of the second chapter 2.5 taking the anitya as nitya ashuchi as shuchi that is permanent as, impermanent as permanent impure as pure sorrowful as pleasurable non self as self so this is how we are all infested by this avidya because we think that our self means our body and mind now the self has a body and mind it's not our body and mind is a, it itself a self we have a body and we have a mind we are not body and we are not mind but we think that we are body and mind the body and mind are non self and we think that they are indeed the self in us so the condition is that reality is that we have a body and we have a mind and not that we are body and we are mind but we deem that we are body and we are mind if you have to point out at our own self we point out at our physical and mental existence so what is anitya that is our what is transient uh, you know transient our body and mind they have a birth and they have a death they come and they go and that is what we consider ourselves that we come and we go so what is impermanent is considered to be permanent and then what is impure the body and mind are nothing but a huge pile of something that is impure something that is dirty and that itself we think it is pure so that's how there is viparita dharana 
विपरीत ज्ञानम दैट इज वाई इट इज कॉल्ड अविद्या फॉर वर साइंस इन गरुड़ पुराणम इट इज डिस्क्राइब अनात्मनि आत्मविज्ञानम असत सत्स्वूपत सुखा भावे तथा सौख्यम माया अविद्या विना विनाशिनो सो वॉट इज अविनाशी इज टेकन एज विनाशी वॉट इज विनाशी इज टेकन एज अविनाशी सो दीज आर ऑल ऑपोजिट्स सुख एज एज दुख दुख एज सुख सो ऑल्सो विष्णु पुराणम अनात्मनि आत्मबुद्धि याचास्व इति या मति संसार तरु संभूति बीजम एतत् विधास्थित दिस इज द सीड अविद्या इज द सीड ऑफ अवर एक्सिस्टेंस इन द फॉर्म दैट वी हैव टुडे सो दैट इज हाउ द अविद्या हैज बीन डिस्कस्ड एंड डिस्क्राइब्ड सो वी गेट आत्म बुद्धि इन अनात्मा we identify ourselves in our own psyche and consciousness and then therefore we say i am hurt i am delighted that self really doesn't get any delight or no indentation by sorrow but then we feel it i am delighted i am sorrowed that means we have atma buddhi where the, it is not atma our psyche is not the self but then psyche is taken to be self and therefore we all have these states such as i am happy i am delighted i am sorrowed i am paid i am worried i am agonized i am in joy etc etc and this is the philosophical delusion that's why it is avidya so the avidya in the form that patanjali mentions as we see the sutra uh, anitya ashuchi dukha anatma su nitya shuchi sukha atma kyati avidya there are four factors there are four factors of indiscrimination or there are four factors of perversion taking anitya as nitya ashuchi as shuchi anitya as nitya means impermanent as permanent impure as pure dukha as sukha and anatma as atma so this is how the avidya has been described vyasa enumerates on this avidya um for us to have the comprehension of these perversions that we have inherently within ourselves as mortals uh say for us you know we know that we have appearance and disappearance on this planet and then we think that the earth is something very permanent because life after life and life after life and life after life after life and will be coming on the planet and disappearing so we think that earth is permanent but that is not true the life of earth is not more than 10000 million years so compared to our life span of 60 70 80 90 100 of years 10000 million years is too long and almost uh, relatively it appears to be permanent even the stars in the heavens the planets the sun the stars the celestial bodies have been there our hundreds and thousands of generations have passed but the sun has been there the stars have been there so we think they are permanent but in fact they are not permanent because sun itself has life span of 10000 million years 
So the stars also have a lifespan of some uh, tens of thousands of millions of years, but then they would be vanishing. They would be disappearing. They will be going away with a supernova or such thing. Nothing is permanent, but we think they are all permanent. We think that they are permanent because considered to our bubble-like existence, they are seemingly eternal existences. So we have this perversion about nothing is really permanent except the soul, except the atma, except the metaphysical atma. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is ageless. They all have age on different scales. Some animals live for a couple of hours. Some creatures, small, tiny creature, creatures, live for a couple of hours. That's all their life is. Then some creatures live for a couple of days, couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of years, and the life is over for them. Couple of animals live for some decades, life is over, like human beings. We exist for a couple of decades, seven, eight, nine, ten decades, and then we are gone. So all this is impermanent, but we think that they are permanent. And going to sun and moon, etc., we think they are eternal. They are not eternal. Nothing is eternal. All that is manifest and has a body is not permanent at all. We die perhaps in hundred years and the stars die after 10,000 million and 20,000 million or 100 million, 100,000 million years. The thing is permanent. So absolutely permanent is only self, Atma. Absolutely Akshara, Avinashi, indestructible is only Atma. Nothing is otherwise permanent like that. But we have a lot of misunderstanding between and then relatively permanent things uh, are taken as permanent things. So it's very interesting to understand the avivekam in the form of nitya, nitya, in the form of shuchi, ashuchi, in the form of dukkha and sukha, and in the form of anatma and atma. That is what is the avidya. So let us look into this avidya as portrayed by Vyasa in his comment. But that is next time. So, namaskar all of you.